Good morning and welcome to this cafe style church service that we're having. It's a shame that we can't be meeting in the flesh but this is the next best thing. I hope that you've managed to grab yourself a coffee to remind yourself of the usual cafe church and you will also need a piece of paper and a pen or a few felt pens. And if you've got those, then we're ready to get started. The theme for today's service is Jesus, the Good Shepherd. And for the starter activity, I would like us to draw a sheep, similar to this one. And later on in the service, we'll be adding to this and it will then be a visual reminder of the ways in which Jesus is our Good Shepherd. So you can draw one like mine, or failing that, you can draw a fluffy cat cloud with four short legs and a couple of eyes, and that would be fine. So I suggest that you press the pause button and have a go at drawing yourself a sheep now.
Today's reading is taken from John chapter 10 verses 1 to 15. Jesus the Good Shepherd I can guarantee this truth. The person who doesn't enter the sheep pen through the gate but climbs in somewhere else is a thief or a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep respond to his voice. He calls his sheep by name and leads them out of the pen. After he has brought out all of his sheep, he walks ahead of them. The sheep follow him because they recognise his voice. They won't follow a stranger. Instead, they will run away from a stranger because they don't recognise his voice. Jesus used this illustration as he talked to the people, but they didn't understand what he meant. Jesus emphasised I can guarantee this tr truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before I did were thieves or robbers. However, the sheep didn't respond to them. I am the gate. Those who enter the sheep pen through me will be saved. They will go in and out of the sheep pen and find food. A thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But I came so that my sheep will have a life and so that they will have everything they need. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd gives his life for the sheep. A hired hand isn't a shepherd and doesn't own the sheep. When he sees a wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and quickly runs away. So the wolf drags the sheep away and scatters the flock. The hired hand is concerned about what he's going to get paid and not about the sheep. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my sheep as the Father knows me. My sheep know me as I know the Father, so I give my life for the sheep. For the next part of our service, you will need the drawing of your sheep and some pens, or just one pen, on felt pens, it, it's up to you. So have those ready. Today's reading was, I am sure, quite a familiar one, where Jesus is teaching the people and using the example of a shepherd and his sheep to describe the relationship that he has with his followers. Of course, we still have shepherds today, but in Jesus' day, it was a very common job and one that people would be very familiar with and they, they would understand the role. Jesus, like many a good teacher, often used illustrations from everyday life to explain spiritual or abstract matters. Now, I don't have a problem with Jesus being a good shepherd, but I'm less sure about me being thought of as a sheep. Yes, there are some lovely cute photos of lambs, but Jesus didn't say we were like lambs. He said we were like a flock of sheep. Most sheep I see up close are dirty, smelly, horrible creatures. And to be considered like a sheep implies that they were stupid and that we can't think for ourselves and just follow others. Well, perhaps that's true. Certainly by the time we eventually come come out of this lockdown we might be looking decidedly shaggy and in need of shearing. I think the picture of Jesus being the Good Shepherd is a valuable one in these anxious and dangerous Corona times. There are some aspects of this passage that we have just heard read today that I think will be really helpful to cling on to in the coming days and weeks ahead. The first encouraging fact I found in the reading was that Jesus knows us intimately. Verse 3 says, he calls his own sheep by name. And verse 14 says, I know my sheep. Jesus knows us and knows how we're feeling in this dreadful situation. He understands what we're going through. 
So, would you like to take your sheep and in the middle of it, write your name? Or you could draw a little picture of yourself if you wish. Okay? A good shepherd looks after his sheep so we can be sure that Jesus looks after us. Now the first way that we're going to look at as, as a way that Jesus cares for his sheep is by giving them what they need. Sheep, I suppose, need grass and water. But what, what about you and I? What do we need? Well, I think the answer is a lot in these difficult times. Jesus provides us with everything that we need. Not only does he provide food and water for our physical bodies, but he also gives us many other things that our spirits need. Maybe you are to totally self-isolating and you're reliant on others buying the supplies that you need. Or you may be anxiously waiting up until the early hours of the morning to get a delivery slot for an online shop. Just remember, Jesus will provide. What other needs do we have? Love, companionship in isolation, joy amidst all the suffering hope that this will end eventually and perhaps inner peace in the anxieties that we face daily trust in jesus and he will provide all we need so would you like to take your picture again and now at the bottom right hand corner if you'd like to write, he gives me all I need. He gives me all I need. And you could draw a little bit of, a few sprigs of grass or something if you want to draw a picture. He gives me all I need. Another way that a shepherd looks after his sheep is by guiding them on a safe path so that they won't fall into danger. Verse 4 of the reading says, He goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Sheep are not known for their brains and they can easily be led astray and get into all sorts of trouble. Jesus promises to guide us by leading the way. He doesn't push us from behind, but goes before us into every new situation. He's leading and guiding us through these uncertain times. We just have to follow. Think about that as you're preparing to brave Morrisons for the weekly shop, frightened of coming into contact with the coronavirus, Jesus knows the safe path for us to walk through life and he promises to lead us on that path. So if you would like to take up your picture again and this time in the bottom left hand corner of your paper can you put he guides me on a safe path. Or you could draw a little picture of a, of a path. He guides me on a safe path. Now another way that a shepherd cares and looks after his sheep is by always being with them. A shepherd in Jesus' time would live all the, all the time with the sheep. And Jesus speaks of being the gate of the sheepfold. And in verse 7, 
it, it describes that the way that the shepherd would lie across the entrance to the sheepfold. And they would sleep there to protect the sheep whilst they were asleep. Jesus has promised to be with us. He said in Matthew 28 verse 20, I am always with you to the very end of the age. We can trust Jesus to keep his promise. When we're isolated and some of us completely on our own, we can be sure that Jesus is with us every minute of every day. We have no need to be lonely because Jesus is not in social isolation, but is with us. I'm certain that were I to be in hospital with COVID-19, unable to have family to visit, that I would not be alone, but Jesus would be right beside me. So, you take up your picture again. Could you write in the top right hand corner of your paper, he is always with me. You can perhaps draw a little picture of Jesus or how you think Jesus might look. He is always with me. Okay, finally, one of the biggest ways that a shepherd looks after his sheep is by protecting them from harm. I've already mentioned that the shepherd would lie across the entrance of the sheepfold and that was to protect his sheep from the wolves and the thieves at night time. During the day, his staff would be used to scare off wild animals as well. A really good shepherd would sometimes be willing to lay down his life for his sheep. Jesus, our good shepherd, was willing to lay down his life for us so that we can have eternal life. In verse 28, this is later on in the chapter from the reading that we've heard, verse 28 says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. In this pandemic, we may have to cope with all sorts of problems, but Jesus has made it possible for us to be kept safe for all eternity. Nothing can separate us from Jesus, not even So, would you like to take a picture again? And in the top left hand corner, if you'd like to put, He protects me from harm eternally. You can perhaps draw the picture of a little picture of a cross. He protects me from harm eternally. So we're living through very stressful times, but we can be sure that Jesus knows us and knows us by name. We can be sure that he gives us all that we need, that he guides us on a safe path. that he is always with us and that he gives us all the protection that we need eternally. Use this piece of paper as a reminder of the ways that Jesus looks after us. Prop it up on a, in a prominent place. Take comfort from the fact that the Good Shepherd will keep his promise and do all these things. I'd like to finish now with, with just a moment of prayer and I'd like you to look at your sheep 
I suppose if you haven't done one, you can look at mine. And in a moment of quiet, thank Jesus for being your good shepherd. We will now come to our time of intercessions. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Thank you, Lord, that you are our good shepherd. Thank you that you give us everything we need. Help us to share your good gifts with others particularly during these strange and unknowing times. Help us to listen and to follow you. Thank you, Lord, that you guide us each day. Thank you that you never leave our side. Guide the leaders in our country to make wise decisions and comfort those going through difficult times. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe and that you are the one that heals. Bring healing to those who are unwell and help them to know your love. Thank you, Lord, that you never stop loving us. Thank you that we can look forward to being with you. Strengthen your church that we might show your love to those around us. We pray for our church in Rose and all those involved with our community. These are testing times. And we pray for those who have lost people due to coronavirus. We pray for our families and our friends and all those who we know that we may be unable to see due to the lockdown measures. We pray for the happiness and health of everyone close to our hearts during this time. Although this year may not have been any, anything that anyone could have planned for, it has shown the strength of the community and family globally as we help each other through this lockdown. We pray for those who may be struggling with mental health, the uncertainty of what will happen and when life will return to some form of normality, those battling depression and anxiety, that we may encourage them through this together and reach out to those who are struggling the most. We pray for members of our church who may be struggling, those who live alone, those who are self-isolating and those who have been taken unwell. Specifically, we pray for all of those people this week who have been taken ill. And after this service, maybe you'll take the time to look on the St Cuthbert's community page and pray for those who are really in need this week. We also pray for those who are carrying on as normal to help our church. A huge thank you to Mark for bringing us these services every week taking his time and effort to put them together for us, despite still juggling his full-time job. To Peter for still bringing us the weekly update. To Natalie for being a big part of the community online page and for everything else that she does. And to every single other person who has contributed over the last few weeks. Sandra, Stuart, Graham and June, Graham and Julie, Sally and John, Dave, Lorraine, Ethan and anyone else who has contributed. We pray, we pray for all the frontline workers, those working for the NHS and the emergency services. These people are risking their lives to help their country. And in a moment of quiet, we pray for those who are in our hearts currently. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us this time to come together and pray. Help each and every one of us to bring hope. Guide us this week with open hearts and minds in everything we do. Amen.
finish our service now with a final prayer. So shall we pray? Christ the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for the sheep, draw us and all who hear his voice to be one flock within one fold. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our service this morning and may God go with you. Goodbye.